Hi there and welcome once again to another Expresso Mechanic tutorial. In this one what we're going to do is have a look at another of the presets that come with Expresso, the system presets. And on this occasion we're going to be looking at strings, in particular mid-string. Uh, well, what we're going to do, we're going to create some text and we're going to print it onto the screen and then make it scroll off to the left uh, hand side. So it's kind of like a bit of a news ticker sort of idea. Um, That's the kind of thing we're aiming for here. So without further ado, let's uh, open the Expresso editor and get things started. Midstring is down here, as you can see in the system presets here come down to strings, midstring. This is what we're going to be using. I'm not going to drag that in yet, but that's just to show you where it is. The first node that we actually need is the time node. And as usual, I'm going to take the time port away and add the frame port. Place that over there, that's great. Following on from here, I'm going to get a constant node. And I'm going to set its data type to string and we'll just type expresso mechanic in there to give us a, a string that we can work with that's fine and then moving on from here the next thing i need is a math modulo so we'll go and get one of those plumb that into the frame there just plumb that in the top and come down here and change our function to a modulo and we'll say five. So every five frames, we're going to bring a character onto the screen. That's what we're going to be doing here. So that's that little bit of it done. Moving on from here, we need a logic compare. So we'll get one of those and we can leave it set up as it is. We don't need to change the function. And we're only going to be using this to reset our monoflop, which we're going to be bringing in next. And we're going to be using that as a counter. So we're going to leave that exactly as it is. So let's get the monoflop, our best friend in many ways. Um, get that in. Such a versatile node, this one. Give it a reset on the left-hand side there. And we can plumb the modulo into the trigger. And we can plumb the compare into the reset. So when we're at zero, we're going to reset the counter. That's what we're going to be doing there. And the trigger, because we've got a modulo here, normally what I would do, or often what I would do, is put a compare afterwards and say if it's equal to um, zero, then we'll get a one at the output of the compare, a true, a true output at the output of the compare. Don't need to actually do that because we can use the zero that's going to come out of this modulo to trigger the monoflop simply by changing the function or the mode, I should say, from normal to, to one shot. So now it will work with a zero at the trigger as opposed to a one. So that's great. So that cuts out the need for another node there. Right, good. So that's good so far. Taking things a step further, I'm going to bring in a Python node because we're going to do a little bit of Python, not much, but we're going to bring that in here. And the first thing that we're going to do is get rid of all of the ports. I'm going to start from scratch. So get rid of that one. Get rid of that one. Now at the input stage, I need a string. So I'm going to bring that in and I'm also going to rename the port string all in with small letters. I can then plug the constant into the string. Now don't worry about the fact that this has got yellow here. It's because we've got no output ports and we're going to bring those in. First one we're going to bring in is another string. And we're going to call this Funnily enough, string, but we're going to use a capital at the beginning, and you'll see why a little bit later. So that's our first input or output there, I should say. And then we want a couple of integers, so we'll bring those into there, and we're going to rename those. The first one we're going to call count, and the bottom one is going to be called minus count underscore I should say underscore count and there we go that's great there's those two in okay good moving on to our next stage we've got to start doing a bit of Python programming so what we're going to do I'm going to open this in the Python editor and I'm going to make a deliberate mistake to show you something important so I'm going to say global count we've already got string there so we'll say global count and we'll say global minus 
count. So there are output ports defined. And then from here, we can simply say that string, well, or rather we'll do count first. So if we say count is equal to len string. So the length of the string coming in at the input is what we're getting here. And then we can say uh, minus count is equal to simply minus sign count. And finally, string is equal to string. And now you can see why I differentiated between the two. It's just to make it easier to understand. OK, so that's our ports defined there. And you can see that we don't have a yellow top on the Python node anymore. It's all sorted itself out. Now, you'll notice that this window here hasn't updated at all, has it? There's nothing, no, no change at all. So if I now close this down, oh dear, I've just lost everything that I've just typed in there. So I need to open the Python editor and I've got to do it again. Now, I don't have to work in the Python editor. Admittedly, I could have typed it all in here. But a lot of the time we do choose to actually open this um, expression editor window here and work in there. So be aware that that's going to happen. Now, the way around it is quite simple. Let's just type everything in again. So if we say global count and global minus underscore count. Oops, going to type. OK, that's great. And then count is equal to then string minus count is equal to minus count and string is equal to string. We've got everything back. So to get around this problem, all you have to do is hit the execute button and it updates straight away in here. So don't get caught out if you do use the expression editor here to do your Python coding. Always hit that ex execute button there to make sure that you've got everything that you've done correctly in there. Otherwise, you'll lose it all and you'll need to do it all again. And you might have a lot long, you know, a lot more lines of code in there. Um, but that's that's fine. So that's all ready. So moving on from here, we need a math ad. It's raining where I am, so hopefully you can't hear that too much. But uh, if you can, I apologize. There's not much I can do about the weather. <laughs> OK, so I'm going to add my counter value or plug my counter value into there. And then I'm also going to plumb this minus count into this addition here. And what we'll do, we'll just get a result node. We'll see what's coming out of the, um, the Python effect or the, the Python node here. Let's just have a quick look. So our count value is the length of the strings. So that's 17. And a minus count is simply the same thing, but with a minus sign in front of it. So it's minus 17. So what we're going to do is count from minus 17 to zero. And that will allow us to put a letter at a time of the text that's in here. So you'll start with the E, then the X, etc., etc. It will gradually count on until we've got the whole word on there. And once the whole word is on, then it will scroll left and take it away. That's what's going to happen here. OK, so. That's that's that little bit of it. Now the all important midstring, we've got to bring that in next. So we can bring that in here. Right, I'm just going to move the count input into the middle. So I can take my string as the input string. So that's going to take this here and, and bring it through the Python uh, node and, and into the input string here. And then our count value can be placed in here. So that's the maximum length of that we're going to be working with. And then finally, we can add or plumb the, plumb the add, the output of the add into the start here. And then we simply need to bring in our text, come down to object properties, text, and there we are, we're sorted. Take the, take the result and plug that into there, okay. Let's just see what we've got. Let's see if it's working. And it is working perfectly. 
and you can see it does exactly what I said it would do. And I've got it set up with the correct number of frames, so it's 180 frames in here, that's how many frames we're going to need for it to, to actually give a perfect loop. Okay, so that's working nicely. So you can see that strings can be quite powerful, they can be quite useful, um, you can do quite a lot with them. And there is going to be a part two actually to this tutorial where I'll show you how to do something a little bit different using both midstring and right string. So, uh, you know, and it's a little bit more Python in that particular tutorial as well to get it all working, but um, we'll have a look at that next time. So yeah, I mean that's that's basically what we're doing. We're starting from uh, minus 70. I mean, if we plug, let's have a look, if we plug the count value, or actually I'll tell you, we'll plug this in here. We'll see what's coming out of there. Okay, so at the moment we're minus nine. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight characters in the space. So we've got, we're minus nine. So we've got effectively half of it in there nearly, or nearly, just over half actually, half of the uh, the sentence, or the, if you want to call it that, uh, the phrase, <laughs> the phrase expresso mechanic. We've got half of that in there. And as we count through, you'll see, I'll tell you what, let's just before we do that, go into calculate animation refresh there. If we count this through, you can see what it's doing. So the positive numbers are when it's being counted off. The, neg the negative numbers allow us to count it on. So that's how this is working. So you've got to start from minus 17 to have nothing and then count through to zero to have it all on there and then start counting in positive numbers to take it off. But it takes it off from the left as opposed to the right. OK, that's how this is working. But it's quite a useful little setup if you want to do something like that in your work. Um, so, yep, that's about it for this tutorial. So I hope you've enjoyed it and you've learned a little bit more and you can see the strings are actually quite powerful and you can do a few different things with them. I mean, there's a lot of different strings in there. I mean, we've even got a lens string, but that lens string, interestingly enough, if we bring that in, we can look at the code. So see length is just len input string. Well, that's exactly the same as I've put there. Count is equal to len string. It's no different. It's just that I've included it in this Python node as opposed to using an extra node here. I mean, I could have incorporated this in there if I'd wanted to, but um, there's no real need because it's just one line of Python code. But um, yeah, I mean, have a play with it. As I always say, see what you can do, see what you can come up with for your own work and see if you can enhance it in any way. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's just about it for this tutorial. So I'll see you very soon on the next one.